Hey everyone and welcome to our new series of stoichiometry. Now stoichiometry is the branch in chemistry that we use to calculate all sorts of things that are related to the action and products and all this stuff. So let's get started. Well, let me talk about a general thing which is a dozen. Well, a dozen is a pack that involves 12 elements like a dozen of bananas would contain 12 bananas a dozen of apples would contain 12 apples now the same thing for chemistry but we don't use a dozen because in chemistry we talk about atoms and we said atoms are very very tiny particles so in chemistry we use something called a mole so a mole is the si unit that chemists use to represent an amount of a substance. Now a mole is denoted by small n. Okay. And a mole of atoms, for example, so one mole would contain Avogadro's number. So that would be 6.023 times 10 to the power 23 atoms. Now let's discuss some examples. Well, let's see. Here are some examples. Well, the first question asks as follows. How many atoms are there in 1.5 moles of sodium? So it asks about atoms. Now, let's see. Well, we said one mole contains Avogadro's number of atoms. Now, let's see. So, we multiply 1.5 times 6.023 times 10 to the power 23. And that would give us 9.03 times 10 to the power 23 atoms. So now we got the number of atoms in sodium, but notice this, sodium is an element, so it contains atoms. Now let's see the next example. Well, the next example asks you this, 2 moles of SO3, and SO3 is a molecular compound. Now that means it contains molecules, not atoms. Now. Now I'm, I'm confused. We said if we want to calculate the number of atoms, we use directly Avogadro's number. But in this case, you're calculating the moles. So let's see. If we multiply 2 moles times Avogadro's number, we get 1.204 times 10 to the power 24 molecules not atoms why is this because so3 is a molecular compound it's not an element so what if we want to find the number of atoms that's completely possible only we have to do you have to multiply this number we got over there by the number of atoms and here we have one s and three o's so we multiply by a total of four and we get 4.816 times 10 to the power 24 atoms. So now we got the atoms. If you're confused about all this, pause my video and redo these examples on your own. So the first example we talked about the atoms that are in an element, which is sodium. In the second example, we talked about the number of molecules and how do we convert from molecules to atoms. So as a conclusion, let's write this. So here, let's put some formulas. We do them in another color. So let's do some formulas. In order to calculate atoms from an element, we multiply the number of moles times Avogadro's number. If we want to find the molecules in a compound, we multiply the number of moles times Avogadro's number also. But what if we want to find the number of atoms in a molecular compound? 
well we multiply that so you multiply that by the number of atoms in the compound now let's move on to something very important in stoichiometry and that is the molar mass the molar mass is basically the atomic mass but it differs for elements it's equal to the atomic mass but for compounds it's equal to the sum so it's equal to the sum of individual atomic masses of each element now molar mass is denoted by big m not small m small m is for the mass the molar mass is different now let's demonstrate this by an example well it reads what is the molar mass of calcium nitrate and the formula is right here so the first step in order to solve such such question we have to get the molar masses of individual elements which is equal to the atomic mass now let's see how we're gonna do this well we have calcium we have nitrogen and we have oxygen now how many calciums do we have we only have one calcium that's right here so we go to our periodic table and we search for the atomic mass of calcium which we're gonna find to be 40.08 and we only have one calcium so we're left with 40.08 now let's move on to nitrogen and notice this we have a bracket so this two is distributed inside so therefore we have two nitrogens and we go to our periodic table and we find the atomic mass and we're gonna find it to be 14.01 and we have two of that so we get 28.02 now lastly we have oxygen and the molar mass of oxygen is 16.00 times 6 because we have 6 oxygens and we're left with 96.00 now we said that the molar mass of a compound is the sum of individual molar masses of the elements so we add those up and we get 164.00 one gram per mole and gram per mole is the unit for the molar mass now as a conclusion let's write this so the molar mass of calcium nitrate is equal to 164.1 gram per mole so that's that for this video we're done here we talked about moles and molar mass so in the next video we're gonna be solving a more complicated example and we're gonna relate how moles and molar masses relate to each other so stay tuned and good luck